Good evening. I'd like to call a uh, regular meeting of the Board of Education of the Goshen Central School District uh, tonight, Tuesday, April 19th, 2022. Uh, this, tonight's meeting is being held in the district administration building and live streamed through YouTube. Uh, next on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance and then a moment of meditation. <laughs> Next on the agenda are tenure appointments. Dr. Coates. So if I can invite all of our tenure candidates up to the front, over to our right side, and we'll all come up together, and our principals and directors will be presenting them this evening. If you don't mind coming up and lining up just a little bit, actually, that would be great. As you all know, the granting of tenure is a significant investment on behalf of the school district. We are basically putting our confidence in you that, as you have done for the first several years of your service here in the district, that you will continue to do so well into the future. So you've demonstrated your readiness and your willingness to take on that task. So it's with great enthusiasm that we're here to celebrate your accomplishments, but also share with you our expectations and our extreme knowledge that we know that you will fulfill that commitment well into the future as you fulfill your careers here in the district as well. So without further ado, I'm going to ask your administrators to introduce you and the tenure area of which we will be granted tenure tonight. So Ms. Carmen, since you're to my right, I'll start with you first. Thank you. Can you go one by one? One by one. Okay. This is Chris Leleva, and she is a TA in the University. Keep right up. So, Chris Zaborski, he is um, our math A teacher and our And then finally, senior Chris Charles Doyle, special education teacher in Oh, good evening. Um, I'd like to thank Jared Vidas, um, the senior area in the area of special education. Okay, our next candidate is Rose and Lessa. Her tenure area is in the area of science, chemistry, and literature. Ms. Dina Lenz, our director of guidance. Ms. Danielle Pagan, special educator. And Ms. Lisa Kuklis, also a special educator. So part of the tenure process for us here at the school district, each of our candidates begins a tenure portfolio when they start with the school district. And both digitally and in writing, our candidates have submitted those. So if any time you would want to come up and see them tonight, please feel free. Some have submitted digitally also to the uh, the board all, all ready to review, but it's a great, showing a great sign of all the work that they have done to get to this mark in their career tonight. So I'm going to turn over to the Board of Education for their consideration now to run through the resolutions for the granting of tenure tonight. I just ask that you let the board get through all of the resolutions and we will uh, offer congratulations to all of you and we'll take a picture together to celebrate the moment. Thank you. I need a motion to approve the appointment of Charles Doyle and Kanika Kuklis. Shannon and Billy. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education approves the tenure appointment of Charles Doyle in the tenure area of special education, effective September 1st, 2022. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education approves the tenure appointment of Kanika Kuklis in the tenure area of special education effective October 15th, 2022. Am I doing it correctly? And then continue with another motion? Okay. Um, I need a motion for the appointment of tenure of the candidates of uh, Dina Lentz and Roseanne Lesser. Shannon and Tom. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendents of schools, the Board of Education approves the tenure appointment of Dina Lentz in the tenure area of guidance, effective August 1st, 2022. 
Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the tenure appointment of Roseanne Lesser in the tenure area of chemistry, effective September 1st, 2022. I need a motion to approve the tenure of uh, Christy Lesser and Danielle Pagan. Oh, I'm sorry. You need to do what? I, I figured we were going to do it all at the end. You need to do all in favor for each one or all at the end? Okay, so I had uh, Shannon and Tom on that one. Okay. Um, and then, I already read Daniel. Okay. Okay. And then I need a motion to approve the appointment of tenure candidates, uh, Jared uh, Friday's and uh, Frederick Zamorski. Shannon and Millie. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the tenure appointment of Jared Rydates, I'm saying it right, right? <laughs> in the tenure area of special education, effective September 1st, 2022. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the tenure appointment of Frederick Zamorski in the tenure area of mathematics, effective September 1st, 2022. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Congratulations, everyone. Yeah. I apologize. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I apologize. That's some last minute filling. Um, <laughs> apologize for that. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the tenure appointment of Christy Lowe in the tenure area of teaching assistant, effective September 1st, 2022. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the tenure appointment of Danielle Pagan in a tenure area of special education, effective September 1st, 2022. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. 
Resolve the Board of Education will enter into executive session with the intent to reconvene the business portion of the meeting for the review of the student discipline matter. All those in favor?
I need a motion to reconvene the normal business portion of the meeting with Shannon and Tom. Next, I need to add item 4.1. I need a motion for resolution number 4.1. Jeremy, Shannon. Be it resolved that the board hereby sustains in part and denies in part an appeal in connection with student discipline of student number 041922. Be it further resolved that the board hereby determines to expunge the five day short term suspension of student number 041922 on procedural grounds from March 24th through March 30th, 2022. And be it fin finally resolved that the appeal of student number 041922's long term suspension dated March 30th, 2022, effectuating a two day Superintendent suspension on March 31st, 2022, and April 1st, 2022, is hereby denied. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> Next on the agenda is privilege of the floor. For those of you who are not familiar with uh, the procedure of privilege of the floor, we now have a sign up sheet. I do respectfully ask for two minutes in time. Um, and also to just to reiterate that privilege of the floor, floor does not necessarily give you an answer at this time. Um, answers, if they are relevant, will be answered individually or in a group setting at a later date. Uh, Liam Lynch. If you could please <laughs> state your name. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, hello, my name is Liam Lynch. I'm a sophomore at the University of I'm speaking today on just behalf of the University Baseball team. Uh, we respectfully request a tarp to cover the infield and the baseball field at the middle school. Uh, the second base area has a history of flooding and has already been the reason of multiple game cancellations rescheduled games and indoor practices. A tarp would not only help the JV team, but would also help the modified team since we chose a field for them. We hope the board will consider helping us to make the field more playable and to help us play the sport that we love. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for coming. <laughs> Amy Gardner. Can I say I'm here? I'm really good. That's fine. Um, hi, I'm just here to uh, request uh, reimbursement for the AP history trip for my uh, senior. My daughter's a senior, and we incurred a cancellation fee based on a meeting that was had to cancel it, but we had no knowledge of the meeting and we weren't included in the meeting. So I've been in touch with World Strides and they can't give us any money back, but I feel that the board made this decision and we weren't included in the decision. And now we're all incurring a $700 cancellation fee. And my daughter can't postpone the trip because she's a senior this year. So I'm just asking the board to reimburse us the cancellation fee that we incurred due to your decision. That's really it. Thank you. Heather Larson. Hi, I am here requesting the same $700 for the same trip that my senior daughter is not able to go on. Um, the decision was made to postpone the trip without any parent input. Um, we weren't part of the discussion. We had no say in it. We, we spent thousands of dollars on a trip that you decided was gonna be postponed without any thought to the financial repercussions for the families that actually paid for it. So at a minimum, we understand that we have to pay to cover the insurance that we, put, we paid I'm totally fine paying for the insurance, which was $225 for me, $250 for others, $150 for others. Everybody's was different. But the $700 that they are calling a 
transfer fee for next, year, next year's trip should not be the responsibility of parents of children that are not able to go on the trip because they are graduating seniors. If the school board or the teacher in charge would like to find a replacement for my daughter and you guys can then get reimbursed, that would be great. I shouldn't be in charge of finding a replacement for a trip during an ongoing war in Europe. So I'm, I expect a response for the $700 request. Thank you. Next, Christy Kreine. <clears throat> well, and, and then Jake Kreine, so do you want to present together? <laughs> we'll present together. Um, we're here for the same reason, but I, I, I think it brings to light a bigger problem. The district should have dealt with World Strides directly and not just left it to a teacher. And I think the district needs to look at their policies moving forward with everything going on in the world. I understand there's a lot on your plate, but with everything going on in the world, you can't give these teachers free reign to do what they did before the pandemic. I mean, that just made no sense. And, you know, should have thought it out a little more before we just opened the floodgates to do what you did before COVID. Thank you. Christy, you're good? No, I, I don't like to say, and it's not about that. But but I will I will say this that the things that were not mentioned are the amount of time that parents are being there spending on the phone um, with World Strikes and the event. But no, my question is actually about the budget. And it's come to light now the five million dollar extra amount of money that's sitting in the fun um, and um, I'm just really trying to understand why we function as if we don't have money or that we don't bring in the supports that we clearly need um, just in, in all different areas um, you walk into the bathrooms at the high school and they're just really really dirty and um, the water fountains they say the kids say just taste disgusting that's inexcusable um, we we funded water fountains, we had filters, um, and we definitely need support staff. I know that the staff put out, uh, they gave some sort of information back. Um, I would say that it would be really interesting to know from the staff what they need um, to have a happier place. I know we were here as mothers and fathers a couple of months ago about the mask mandate, and the um, theme that rang true was People are really unhappy. Kids are unhappy. Staff is unhappy. We have a lot of money that we could be doing something with instead of functioning like we have no money. I don't understand it. It's a lot of money. And that should be able to bring the, the whole environment to a different place. So that's kind of, I know I'll hear no answer, but it would be really nice if the public had some clarity on what we could do different. The, just to address specifically the capital reserves that you brought up, when a Board of Education is authorized to create a capital reserve, there's only a small scope for which that money can be appropriated. So if it creates a capital reserve that says it can be used for roofing, for adding an addition, for replacing windows, that money then can't be removed and put into personnel. So the other things that you brought up with redoing bathrooms or looking at piping or things like that, that money can be used for that. It has to be authorized, so similar to, it has to be authorized to put into a capital reserve, at the same time, it has to be approved to take it out. So if we were going to, do, similar to what we're asking to do with that money now to replace the roof and the HVAC at Scottstown, this next capital reserve that the community is gonna be asked for in this budget as well, those items that you just referenced could be put on there as well as the next round of items to be addressed in the building. So as we create the capital reserve and try not to ask the community to borrow additional money, we can go and cross those things off the list as we work through. Thank you, and I appreciate your answer. It helps. Yeah. Can I just say one thing that I like? But the capital reserve during COVID was totally beefed up because you had operational money available. It was moved from operations to capital reserve. 
there are the trees Correct. that's open. Correct. That's where efficiency savings come from. So we could have bought it then before we moved it to capital reserve. Well, there, there are certain thresholds. So let's say you have a million dollars that you're going to spend. There are certain thresholds that, number one, sometimes they have to be put before the public for a vote, so you can't just go out and say, okay, I'm going to spend a million dollars to put a roof on. You, you have to put some of those things out before the public for a vote. But also, the capital reserve can only be for a set amount at the same time. So when that money gets moved in, let's say the capital reserve was set for not to exceed $5 million, which this one created in 2019 was, the board can't put more than $5 million in that account. Thank you. So, this new one occurs, for how long is it good for? What's the term usually of the capital reserve? Usually 10 years. So we have, it's not like we're gonna put 5 million in <coughs> this year. Correct. It could be 5 million over 10 years. Correct. Right, we could have 100,000 this year, we could have two. So it's from efficiency savings. So let's use the example of energy costs. Let's stay optimistic. Let's assume energy costs come down. Maybe I'm being ignorant and blissfully optimistic, but let's assume they come down next year and we're under budget and we have $200,000 out of our energy line. That could potentially be transferred at the end of the year into the capital reserve and saved over time. So as you accumulate that money, let's say it's gonna be $100,000 to replace all of the bathrooms in the high school. You then could take that hundred thousand dollars out, fix those bathrooms, and still have a million dollars left in the capital reserve. And next year, you go out to the voters and say, "Okay, we want to replace the next roof. We want to replace plumbing, whatever the case may be." You can spend that money over time, similar to the way that you're saving it over time. But at the same time, I need to come back to the voters. Every the board needs to come back to the voters every single time to ask for permission to use the money that the public gave us permission to save. Right, so, but I think, yeah, and I and I, I agree with you and I understand it, but I think part of Christie's concerns are that there's some operational stuff that aren't being addressed. Painting the bathroom doesn't make it. Painting, cleaning, water fountains, those are all things that, that are operational issues that should be addressed on, on an ongoing basis that, that aren't being addressed in the high school. I can't speak to the middle school. Don't we have another facility? Sure, and there is a, another custodian's position. So when we so increase another one to this board. Right, when we increase square footage, when we increase the size of the facilities in the high school, we didn't add additional staff. It's not an excuse, but it will help to mitigate some of those concerns that you're bringing to light, keeping up with some of those regular maintenance pieces that are on an ongoing basis throughout the day. And that we have money. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Next up, privilege on the floor, Jennifer Kirk. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, additionally, I'm talking about the uh, AP growth strides uh, trip. Um, in addition to what everybody else was saying, you know, multiple emails did go, um, whether the board was aware of or not, uh, the opportunity for them to change venue, um, change trip location was also options that could have been made. Um, and the school made the decision when Ms. Panzer, who was in charge of the new uh, trip, made decision to roll it forward. So not only are we being charged a transfer fee, we're being charged a transfer fee to go to the exact same location. So the locations we're referring to are Hungary, um, was it Hungary, Austria, and the Czech Republic. All that are on direct borders to Ukraine and the current crisis that is happening in Europe. We are not looking at a trip that was looking to go to Paris or you know visit the Queen in England. This was a clear, um, war zone area that was being expected to go. Multiple calls, multiple emails um, were sent out by many families. Um, I know myself have multiple emails on file where I had sent records from the travel.gov websites indicating maps where the entire Central Europe countries were in red, the ledger read that it was a do not travel to um, but yet we were we were only told we were given the option to transfer forward. We could sell our trip to somebody else, or look to transfer and uh, look to cancel and assume the cost of a cancellation fee. And our travel insurance would hopefully recoup some of that. So this seven hundred dollars was not even a discussion that was presented to us when decisions were being made. And like I said, no other option of well, what would you like to do? Would you like to consider maybe Paris instead? 
What about a lovely, you know, Italian Riviera? It was basically rolled forward to go to the exact same location in Europe that is currently in a, a war-torn um, situation. So I do want that to be um, noted and considered when the board is considering whether or not they can help us, support us, or even just fight on our behalf with world tribes. Um, Next, Karen Thank you. Um, I'm speaking on the same behalf. Um, I'm in a little bit different situation. I called the first time. Um, I was disconnected twice. After I called back, I got a representative. I asked to speak with a manager. The manager then told me that I would have to pay the four hundred dollars to um, move my to cancel my trip. Um, sorry, I did not speak to the manager then. They told me that they would call me on Monday. When I waited for the call, I called again. So I've called four times. Now they're telling me, because I asked Marie Panzer if I could get the rep person that she deals with, they're charging me $1,078. So some of these people have gotten a full refund except for $400 and then the $700 tacked on. I'm being charged because now it's in my file. Thousand seventy eight to cancel. If I have my daughter go next year, I'll also have the seven hundred dollar transfer fee on top of that. Um, I know for a fact that Valley Central and Chester just went on a very similar trip. So Chester went to two of the three places that we were supposed to go. Not granted, not saying that I would have sent my daughter, but the trip did go, and they said it was because they are not refunding our money because the Board of Ed canceled, not them, World Strides are canceling. So they are not going to refund my 1,078. I have no problem possibly sending her next year. The only problem, this company has been in Chapter 11 two years ago. So I have a problem leaving my almost $5,000 with this company. If I wanna send her again, that should be my choice to pay the money at that point. So I feel like this was, this is a company that if our school is using, we should be supported as parents, especially I paid the extra insurance, the top insurance, because of COVID reasons not knowing, and I, with that insurance, I made sure I could cancel up to two days prior. <coughs> Nobody can put, a, no manager will get on the phone and talk to me about this possible war going on that they will give me my money back. So I'm very disappointed in the company, I'm disappointed in the whole, how this whole thing un, unraveled, and that I could be possibly out $1,100 almost. And you know, this was supposed to be an experience that these kids have, this group of kids has, has lost everything. So, you know, um, on top of that, on the $400 that they want everybody to cancel with, that they want us to submit a claim to possibly get 75% of that $400, not including the $700 that they're tacking on at this point. So there's a lot of it, and it depends on who you get on the phone. So there's no set for anybody. If you talk to everybody, everybody's got different answers. Everybody's got different amounts back, which doesn't fly as a company. Um, I would just like to ask one question in regards to Christy's um, comment. I believe the high school has brand new bathrooms that was done through the capital project. Is there any reason why those two bathrooms in the main corridor are not open at this point? So the new bathrooms are obviously in the addition. The older section, the quad of the building, were not re, uh, not redone, not refurbished. No, the ones right from the auditorium. They're they're gorgeous. They're nice bathrooms. I don't, I don't even think the kids even know that they're there. I don't want to put Ms. Martin on the spot. Can you just speak to the protocol on how you? Um, the concern is that those bathrooms are there primarily for the use when we have events at the auditorium. Um, because they are single stalls. There is a safety concern that a student could theoretically lock themselves in there and it creates a safety concern. That's why the multiple stalls are in the preferred bathrooms. They can be better monitored. Um, you know, definitely taking into account if there's things that, that we can put work orders in and put attention to in the building. But that's why those aren't utilized to the same extent that the other ones are. I just I, I I didn't even know they were there until somebody said it and they're like they're they're really nice. I mean so even for like basketball games and things like that, we're we're going into two stalls and there's a large crowd, maybe that you know what I mean. I know you guys have different bathroom procedures that are going on at the high school due to very concerning reasons, but maybe if you know if they're up to code and they're ready to be used, maybe they could be opened up and 
allow the public to use them. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for coming tonight for their comments. We do, we do listen, we do appreciate it. And you know what, normally we don't comment, but I will say, you know, thank you for coming. And it, it sounds like there is an issue with World Strides. Um, I'm not passing the buck, um, but definitely, you know, as a board member, we will look into it and see if there is something. Can I um, add something or do I need to wait? No. Um, so I just was on the phone. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I have been on the phone with them at least 16 times. Me too. And I'm off this week, so I was on with Jose for the 12th time in the last two weeks. And he said the reason we're getting charged is $700 fee is because the cancellation was done too close to the departure date of the trip. So again, that was something that we were not aware that it was being canceled at the time. And that was the board's decision. So if you were going to cancel it, you should have been aware of the time frame that allotted it so that we didn't get charged. Or that I just feel like it's it's not it's not fair for us to have to pay 700 times how many people are here for a trip that we were not a part of discussing. There was never even like a discussion like with the war raging on, what do you think? What Where else could we go? There was no return calls when we ask the teacher and I just feel like it has to be addressed I mean in addition to that my younger daughter was supposed to go to To Kill a Mockingbird I didn't even get crazy about that hundred dollars but that was never discussed either so I just feel like all these decisions that are being made I'm requesting that you just include the parents of the kids that are going to be part of that event it makes sense to me I don't understand why that's not something that's in the forefront when you're making a decision include all the parties that are included in it so I just feel that that money now is because of a poor decision on whoever, but the, the lateness is what I was, the, the reason I was given today is the lateness of the cancellation is why we are incurring the 700 now. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And we also paid 300 to move it from last year to this year because of COVID. So like, this is ridiculous. Thank you. I know that my email went out on February 24th, and at that time, the war had already begun, and our trip wasn't due to leave until April 9th. So at that point, it was 42 days from the time of departure. So I'm, I'm also not sure why Ms. Panzer did not present it to the board until that close to departure time. Okay, now she, as a staff member and the organization of, the, of this trip, does not pay to go on these trips. She is comped for bringing the tour group. Um, in addition to any of the staff members that she brought, brought it's generally a one per 10, um, and they get the trip for free. So, you know, her hesitation to maybe present it to you to then make the decision. I'm sure maybe you weren't aware that there was these policies in place, but that war broke out and it was concerned to travel to these countries long before the trip was due to depart. So thanks to consider that. Next on the agenda, we have the president's report. We're going to skip that. Item seven on the agenda, legislative update. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Thank you. So I just want to bring one item to everyone's attention. Ms. Martin, if you don't mind helping me with the, the, the good news that you shared, I'll let you share it. Uh, oh, sure. Um, we have been contacted by an alum of Gosha High School, Brigadier General, hold on, I want to get their here. Wow. Um, so he is a five-star general who did graduate from Goshen High School, and he had reached out to see if it would be possible for him to come in and speak with our students. And so we were able to coordinate with his liaisons to set an event that'll be for our junior class. Um, he's really passionate about helping students find their path, be it in the military or otherwise, and just um, communicate the message through his own story that if you encounter a roadblock, you know, how to go about using skills to overcome it to achieve what is your passion. Um, so he's really excited. He'll be also stopping at the VFW while he's here in Goshen visiting 
So it's a huge honor that we'll be able to host him on May 19th. That's a Thursday. It'll be in the morning. Um, we're hoping to be able to live stream the event. Um, and in addition, um, you know, we thought it was special for the juniors. The seniors will, in large part, be on the trip at that point. It'll be really um, kind of a pep rally for their senior year and keeping them motivated, keeping them getting to the end of the year. Um, in addition, Lieutenant Colonel Hutchinson will be coming in, um, who will be also able to coordinate with the Army Reserve bases to talk about, um, you know, the choices, the importance of choices once you graduate. This will be in early May, and again, it'll be at a 9 a.m. This will be exclusively for our seniors, and just kind of keeping them focused before they start the end of the year events. Um, and it's nice because we haven't yet been able to have as many whole class assemblies. So, you know, certainly quite an honor and a benefit to both the school and the community. Thank you, Ms. Martin. I'd also love, like to welcome tonight Ms. Maureen Van Hope Lamoran, who is on our board resolution tonight to begin with us as our new assistant superintendent for business starting on July 1. So, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder, the board will uh, be asked to approve the budget proposal for the 22-23 fiscal year. As a reminder, our proposed budget uh, is a 0% on the tax levy at, for the second year in a row. As we have discussed, um, there are two propositions also that will be included that we will be asking the community to consider. Number one is a capital improvement project that will be funded between the $5 million in capital reserve and the just over $4 million that we have received in federal money that will be uh, used to replace the roof at Scottsdale Avenue Elementary and also HVAC, HVAC upgrades throughout Scottsdale. And then if the bids come in favorable, pending the approval of the uh, proposition, we would move on to additional roofing at GIS as well. The second uh, proposition will be the creation of a new capital reserve since we will hopefully be using the $5 million for the renovations at Scottsdale. And again, that would be uh, for a 10 year period from efficiency savings, money that's not spent at the end of the year, to be able to accumulate money to uh, care for our facilities over time. The purpose, again, of a capital reserve is for us to be able to mitigate spending, to have to not go back and ask for additional borrowing, and it allows for us to keep up with work over time rather than having to go back and ask for additional monies through any kind of borrowing note. We also uh, will have our public hearing and budget documents available after uh, the pending approval of the board adopting the budget. That will be available on May 3rd, 2022. And then uh, the board also will have the opportunity uh, during the BOCES annual budget meeting on uh, April 21st at 6 p.m. to vote on the administrative component of the BOCES budget as well, which is an annual vote that boards have the option to Tonight. Thank you, Dr. Thank you. Next on the agenda, the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum, Instruction, Personnel, and Technology Report, Mr. Jason Carter. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Ms. Salty. Uh, two items for you this evening. First, uh, Science Olympiad. So our junior team, comprised of students in grades six through nine, had the opportunity to compete uh, at East Syracuse Manoa High School in the state event. Uh, there were 40 teams competing and our junior team placed fifth overall so we're very very proud of what they've done uh, last year they had a 19th place finish so you can see uh, the great increase and again we're, we're very proud of them and their efforts <coughs> of the 11 competitors that we had um, attend and compete almost all of them if not every one of them received individual medals as well so again it just shows uh, you know just how great we're doing in that area uh, in addition to many others of course so i just want to say thank you to all of our uh, Coaches, Ms. Pahuki, most importantly, Ms. Dendanto and her efforts at the middle school, all the volunteers, uh, and of course, we're grateful for the efforts of our students. Uh, also, for what, what I would say is the sixth consecutive year, however, I know that we did have a COVID year in between that span. Uh, the Goshen Central School District has been recognized once again by the NAM Foundation as one of the best communities in the nation uh, for, for music, being a great music community. So we're very proud of that. Um, this is something that, you know, 
doesn't go to just anyone. Uh, we're one of 738 school districts nationwide to receive that award. Uh, and to do that year after year shows the quality of our program, of our teachers, our administrators, and more importantly, our student participants in the program. Uh, but it's also due in large part to the support provided by our community, our school board. Uh, everyone has a piece in that. So again, we're very proud of that accomplishment uh, and we look forward to achieving that level year after year. Um, it's, a, it's a great achievement for our program. And that is it for me at this moment. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Next on the agenda, I need a motion for the consent agenda. Jeremy and Shannon. To get results upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the consent agenda as presented. All in favor? Opposed? There's no old business. New business. I need a motion for 12.1, appointment of assistant superintendent for business. Tom, Shannon. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education appoints Maureen Van Put Lam Lamarind. Am I saying that correct, Maureen? Yes. Okay. Thank you. As assistant superintendent for business at a gross salary of 2010, 2000 and <laughs> <laughs> 210,000 effective July 1st, 2022, in the 10-year area of Assistant Superintendent for Business with a 10-year date of July 1st, 2026. Ms. Van Van Put Lam I'm gonna honestly, this is gonna be hard for me, I'm sorry. <laughs> As school district business leader certification. Ms. Van Put Lammer Lam is replacing Louise Lynch. All in favor? Aye. Congratulations. 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 Next on the agenda, I need an approval for the minutes. Jeremy? Billy? Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the minutes for the April 4th, 2022 regular board meeting. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? 12.3, I need a motion to adopt the proposed 2022-2023 school year budget and property tax report card. Thank you, Maureen, am I gonna do like a roll call? Uh, can I have a motion? Jeremy and Tom. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education adopts the budget, property tax report card, and school district budget notice for the 2022-2023 school year in the amount of 83,700,000. We'll do a roll call. Billy? Yes. Shannon? Yes. Tom? Yes. Jeremy? Yes. Mike? Yes. And I say yes. And Jason is not there. All those in favor? We already said yes. <laughs> Thank you. Next on the agenda, 12.4, I need a motion to authorize an appropriation to pay off bus bans. Jeremy and Shannon. Be it resolved, the Board of Education of the Goshen Central School District authorizes an appropriation of $1,354,820 to the general fund from the unappropriated fund balance for the purpose of paying the balance of all remaining bus bans including any interest due. The appropriation shall be $1,350,633 in A9732.600 bus ban principal and $4,187 in A9732.700 bus ban interest. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? I need a motion for 12.5, approve proposal to provide special education legal services, Thomas, Drohan, Waxman, Pettigro, and Mail LLP. Tom, Billy. Be it resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education approves the proposal for special education legal services for the 2022-2023 school year 
from Thomas Johan Waxman Pettigrew and Mail uh, LLP Attorneys at Law according to the following terms. Up to 90 hours per year, $14,306.25 annual retainer. Above 90 hours per year, $220 an hour for attorney services, $105 an hour for paralegal services. Litigation services and non-retainer matters, $220 per hour for attorney services, $105 per hour for paralegal services. Be it further resolved, the Board of Education authorizes the Superintendent of Schools to execute the proposal. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Next on the agenda, privilege of the floor. Any board member issues? And then you don't need the executive session, do you? Yes. Oh, you do? And to reconvene, not to no, okay, okay. I need a motion to go into executive session. Jeremy, Billy. Be it resolved, the Board of Education will enter into executive session with the intent to not reconvene the business portion of the meeting for discussions related to the employment history of a particular person or persons. All those in favor? Opposed? Thank you all for coming tonight. Have a good evening. Thank you guys for the